morning. Today is March 1st, and I told you yesterday we would be ending another month, and we did. And so now we're in March, and it seems as though the year's flying by, and before we know it, we'll be spending Easter together. But this morning, I've got a special friend of mine, and not just mine, but of the family. His name is Ephraim Silva, and Ephraim has been a friend. We were talking last night, I think, how many years, Ephraim? Yeah, 16, 17 years. 16, 17 years yeah. uh, from Florida. And uh, Ephraim actually worked with me at the church where I served down in Florida. And um, Ephraim, why don't you quickly tell us, tell everybody what you do now? Yeah, I'm a Chick-fil-A operator now. I got a beautiful wife of 16, 15 years. I hope she's not watching this. 15 years, two beautiful girls. And um, yeah, that's where I'm at right now, down in South Flo sunny South Florida. His dad was the pastor of mm -hmm. our Spanish-speaking congregation there. And so um, just a real, real connection and family. But he came up for some meetings here in Atlanta at the Support Center with Chick-fil-A and spent the night with us last night. So I asked him to join with me on a devotion this morning. And um, so we're, I'm just glad to have my friend Ephraim here with me. I say all through all the years, all the young men, Ephraim is top shelf. And so it's good to, good to have him with me. Uh, and I can keep friends for a long time, so maybe that's a maybe that's a good <laughs> indication. Um, but this morning, a couple of things I want to mention to you to be praying about. Uh, Linda Williams is having her hip replacement surgery tomorrow, so be praying for her as uh, she has that done tomorrow. James is still recovering, I think, from his accident, and so uh, continue to pray for the Petresco family as uh, they're continuing to get over um, the loss of Constantine Lee. I just saw you come on this morning. And so um, we, we're just continuing to pray for you and your family. This morning, we're going to look at uh, just two, two brief verses in John chapter 19 um, that, that man just has such significance and impact. And really, we're going to look at one phrase this morning. And Ephraim and I are just going to kind of dialogue that phrase. But, of course, we know where we've been. Uh, Jesus is now coming to the point where he's going to the cross. And I couldn't help but think of this old hymn this morning. And uh, you know it, I'm pretty sure. The old rugged cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best were a world sinners were slain so I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange Cross, so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear him to dark Calvary. So I cherish. I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach gladly bear. If you call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I will share. So I'll cherish, so I'll cherish the old. Till my trophies at last 
rest I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a I love that last verse. The first two sentences of it, though, I think about it. To the old rugged cross I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach gladly bear. Words easier said or sung than holding to. But, but the last part of that, then he'll call me someday to my home far away where his glory uh, forever I'll share. Um, take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 19. And let me just read these verses 28 and 29. Uh, through 30, and then come back and just reflect on one phrase that's taking place. Here we know Jesus had they placed him on the cross. He's been nailed to the cross. He spoke to John to take care of his mother, uh, told his mother, Mother, this is now your son. And we see the humanity in that, I think, of Jesus, uh, fully God yet fully man. But then in verse 28, after this, Jesus, knowing that all he was now, knowing that all was now finished, said in order to fulfill the scripture, and we get this, I think, from Psalm 65. I can't remember exactly. He says, I thirst. And then a jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. Verse 30, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And the one phrase I want to concentrate on this morning as I was reflecting on this passage in my quiet time, was when he said, it is finished. And, and we have to ask the question, what was finished? Um, hmm. Ephraim, was he just talking about hmm. his earthly life? Or hmm. in, that, in that complete sentence, it is finished. What, what, I, what was Jesus referring to hmm. when he said that? I think the, the redemptive work, yeah. <laughs> you know? The, the everything that had been, you know, we were talking about it a little bit before, and it made me think of uh, my girls have this Jesus storybook Bible, mm -hmm. and it goes all the way to the beginning. Oh, wow. You know, wow. Th th from Adam and Eve and Noah and Abraham and all the stories mm -hmm. that we know and how Jesus is is the great rescuer that's coming, that's coming, the Messiah. And and uh, I think about all that, all that work that led up to that point mm -hmm. on the cross, mm -hmm. the redemptive work, you know, all the way from the fall of the garden. All the way there, yeah. And, and where God had, had prophesied yeah. in that passage yeah. in Genesis chapter yeah. three that um, that there would be one that would that would come. Mm -hmm. And we see the fulfillment of that in Christ. And of course, I can't help but think what Paul mm -hmm. said, um, I think in Colossians or mm -hmm. Galatians, where he said, in, in the fullness of time, mm -hmm. God sent his son. And you know, we talk about this a lot, God's progressive plan of redemption. Mm -hmm. So from that very moment in the garden, God put into, in, God implemented his plan mm -hmm. to redeem man mm -hmm. who had been separated from God, mm -hmm. separated from God in relationship uh, and, and fellowship as well. And from that point on, we see throughout the history of, of the old patriarchs, mm -hmm. Noah, the flood, mm -hmm. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, yep. um, God changing Jacob's name to Israel and then you know, we go through the chronicles of, of Israel and, and all the prophets and mm. uh, to that time of Jesus where he, where he, on the cross, he says, it is finished. There's, there's an interesting thing about the word that's used there, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the Greek. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't impress you by that, I know, and I would mispronounce it. And some of you would look it up and you'd send me an email <laughs> and say, J-Mo, you mispronounced that Greek word. Um, but in the Greek language, uh, you know, the Greeks prided themselves in saying as much as they could in one word mm -hmm. wow. and because they were great orators. And so if they could say it just in one word, which many of you wish I was that on <laughs> Sunday mornings, that I could say something in one word rather than 15 minutes. Um, but he, that word that's translated finished um, has to do with the totality of all of wow. Christ's work. And so it's finished now that plan of redemption, um, hmm. the, all the requirements that were necessary to redeem lost man were fulfilled in Christ. And in that moment, it, but that Greek word is in the, in the 
in the present tense. And it, it means that it is finished, but it still has ongoing ramifications. <laughs> it's what you might wow. use when, if you'd run a marathon wow. and you say, okay, it's finished. Um, but there aren't ongoing ramifications yeah, yeah, on that. Yeah. Um, you had a good example of, uh, of, of what that, that might be when you talked about a world champion. Yeah, a world champion that can then say, I'm the world champion for this year. Right. You know, you can kind of brag about it for the next year, except this, what we're talking about, this is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know, for, for all this time, for these, these, all this time that people had been waiting for this, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and the work was finished, the work was completed, and it carries forward for return. I mean, we're still seeing the ramifications of that today. That's right. Yeah. Right? That's so powerful. It's the kind of word that you we might use when we finish a dissertation. Mm. I'm finished with mm. that dissertation, or it is finished, the work for that is finished, but there's ongoing ramifications of that. And hmm. um, if, how, how, would, how do we apply that in our lives when we reflect on our salvation being complete in Christ and, and what he performed on the cross? How, I, what are some ways you think in a daily way that... Um, that we might apply that. Um, I'm thinking about this hymn, you know, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking about this hymn and just thinking about, Lord, um, would you give us the strength to, to think about the cross, mm -hmm. the work of the cross, that it, the, the, the grace that was demonstrated on the cross, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the work that was performed in my life because of the cross mm -hmm. and, and how my life has literally been transformed. It is a different life. I am a new person. Mm. And, and how I can walk in that daily, mm. in sanctification, in the redemptive work of Jesus, mm -hmm. um, as I disciple my family, yeah. my wife, my daughters, right. The, right. the redemptive work of Christ in their life. Mm. You were talking, we were talking last night, we set up till one o'clock talking <laughs> last night, uh, but you, one thing that comes to mind, what you talked about was, you know, you have your, your time of prayer and then the mm -hmm. word in the morning, remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and what was share with, what you, what you said after you get in the car and you're. Yeah. I mean, I was oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking to myself, Lord, I need you every single minute of every single day, every single moment, because I'll, I'll have my quiet time, I'll, I'll spend time with the Lord, I'll be on my face worshiping God, and I'll worship Him on the way there, and I'll be on 995, and somebody might cut me off, or something might happen, or I might get a call, and how easy my my flesh just wants to crawl back to like this <laughs> point of, and, 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 and I do, I need the Lord, I need, I need to focus mm -hmm. back on the cross, the work yeah. that the Lord has done, you know, to forgive my sins and to bring me back to Him. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't know this isn't true, but sometimes I think God continues to allow us to walk in the flesh, show us how much we need Him. Yeah. Um, that we we mm. cannot live that life outside or mm. apart from the finished work of Christ on the cross. And um, mm. w w one one of the things that we we realized that we were talking about what Jesus didn't say. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I am finished. Yeah. 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 He didn't say, I am finished, yeah. because if he'd said, I am finished, that's kind of like, oh, I'm finished, I'm exhausted, mm -hmm. and he was defeated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he said, it is mm -hmm. finished. And um, mm -hmm. so I want us to, to close this morning with that thought of realizing that it is finished. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more that you or I can add to the work of Christ. Um, oh, it's complete in him. If you're on a treadmill in, in your Christian life, Kind of thinking, okay, I got to do more. I got to mm -hmm. earn my way back. I've, maybe I've slipped today. Maybe I've really been a bonehead today. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing we can do to work mm -hmm. ourselves back. It's been complete in the cross. It is finished. Mm -hmm. And I, I really think, you know, sometimes we shy away from from being proactive in that message of the gospel. Um, but I really believe that's what that's what mankind is looking for. Mm -hmm. And whether it's another religion they choose or it's a religion of their own that they make, um, they're trying to fulfill that which only the cross can yeah. fulfill in their life to bring them into relationship with Christ. And, y'all, we need to walk in that every single day. We need to walk in it not only in our relationship with Him, but but I think, you know, the Bible says to love God and love your neighbor. And, and we need to walk in that with one another as well and exercise that grace 
within the body of Christ, that's within good. our family. Um, all of that's been complete in the cross. And wow. Ephraim, you mentioned, you know, we need him every yeah. hour. Yeah. And so I want to close out our time this morning by, by singing that old hymn. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I need thee every hour. Mm -hmm. And let's reflect on that. And, and as always, I want to encourage you, pray and ask God today. God, give me an opportunity to sow a seed of the gospel in somebody's Amen. heart today. Wherever you might be going, I know you're going to Chick-fil-A headquarters, mm -hmm. and we think everybody at Chick-fil-A is saved. Mm -hmm. Well, that's probably <laughs> not the case. No. Uh, but that God would lead, use, use you to sow a seed. And, yeah. Amen. And maybe if a seed you recognize has been planted in somebody's heart, that God would give us the wisdom to know how to cultivate that seed that's been sown, sharing the Word of God, sharing the love of God through our lives, into their life. And man, if God would grace us with the opportunity to watch Him yeah. save somebody today, that would, that would just make my day. Amen. And so we need Him every hour. Um, we're going to pick up tomorrow morning. In the remainder of, actually, I think we're going to look at John chapter 20 tomorrow and then 21 the following day because we've, we're have we going to be starting in the book of Hebrews next Monday. And so I would encourage you to, uh, we're going to be putting some social media out promoting that. It's a good time to invite people to begin joining us on these daily devotions just to get people in the Word and, and give a, a time of, of encouragement through the Word. But let's... Um, Let's close with this. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. Your tender voice like thine can peace of a I need thee, oh, I need thee. I come to thee. I need thee every hour. Stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee. I come to the last verse. I need the every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me thine in thee, thou blessed son. I need thee, oh, I need I come to you. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep Amen. you. And uh, can we just tell our friend Ephraim with maybe a heart emoji or a thumbs up emoji? No angry emojis, please. <laughs> um, if you got fat fingers, don't don't hit the angry emoji. Um, but Ephraim, thank you oh. for, for sharing thank you, your yeah. time with us. Thanks for having me. It's yeah. my pleasure and such an honor to be with. I mean, you all know uh, your pastor here, but it's just such an honor to have known him. He's, he was my mentor. He calls me his friend now. It's always so little weird. Mm -hmm. I guess we are friends, but he's always been my mentor for the past 16, 17 years. And what an honor to honestly to be have learned and been led and, and, and discipled by you. So thank you for all that the Lord has yeah. used you to do in my life. Well, Ephraim's one of those that's carried that on. He's making disciples, and so that's what it's all about. Yeah. Love y'all. Y'all have a great day. God bless you.